just that. Right. I'll put it on a 12 as I say. Start the silk at the back. Now I'm using the fine silk again because although I'm going to be using deer hair, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not splaying or spinning it. I'm doing something, I'm, I'm forming a detached body basically with it, but very easy. So I'll put a bed of silk on. And I'll come back up to about halfway. The rear half I want as the body. I mean, if anybody's got a preference of colour of sedge, I'm quite happy to, if there's one in there. I mean, an orangey, orangey sedges are quite useful around us. No? Mm -hmm. Orange? Yeah. Good tough to be, I can do red. <laughs> Olives work quite well around us as well. And naturals. I mean, in actual fact, no, I won't do orange. I'm just going to do natural uh, hairs for it. Because I think that's what Richard prefers for his. But it doesn't seem to go far wrong. I can just use some of this. I'll use some guard hairs. Get rid of the under fur. Now, what I like to do, if I'm doing something like this, the silk starting, my, my dubbing is going to start about halfway. I come back half, back along the rear half, and I've got control over just how much dubbing's going on at that back end. Keep it nice and tight. Do you understand what I mean? Do it in two thicknesses. Instead of trying to get one on and come forwards, it might end up lumpy, it might not go on evenly. If you started it there and you're coming back along, you've got control over it. And it gives you a nice shaggy body to finish off with. Right, I'm going to start my newly purchased bit of deer hair from Mr. Mike Johnson. I was saying earlier, when you've got a guy like this, I don't know how many of you know him, there's a chap in Cheshire, and his deer hair is the best. Um, you know, I trade with Venyards and I trade with lots of other companies, but I don't say much to them. There, there aren't many to match what Mike does. I mean, I, I sent him ten pound last week. That is a quarter of what I got back for ten pound. Right, so I was quite pleased. And, and he sent me two. That is for bodies. That is longer for the wings. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's the same <clears throat> off the same skin. But different parts of the skin give you different qualities of air. Right. So we're just going to have a little bit of this for a wing. And then I'll put this in the stacker, the smaller one. Yes, yeah, they, they, they're well looked after tonight, aren't they, Jim? You don't know, they get hair stuff. It's shocked. I didn't realise we were going quite well with you, I thought I'd bring one for this new deer, you see. So, yeah, I, I do normally do it in my hand like this. Yeah. Just tap it and it does it. <laughs> but people think I'm a smart ass when I do that, so. Right. We do. So. Position this for length. Then you're going to cut off the piece that you were just going to tie it in with. Can you see? See my finger and thumb there? We've got the right length. What you do is put a turn of silk around the end of the deer hair, pull it down onto the hook, and tie it in. Now, what's the problem with that? Hmm? And then we'll take a hackle. Um, now, unusually, Richard would suggest that you cut off the base of the hackle once you've tied it in. Not my preferred method, but I'll go with him on it. 
can I put? Now this is the first time you'll see me doing something different as well, and I don't think you'll have seen it in many books. It's called reverse hacking. Dry fly, wet fly. If you're tying a wet fly hackle in, uh, the, the curve, natural curve of the feather is always down. Okay? E.g. the shiny side is always on the top. If you're tying a dry fly hackle in, the curve is up. And the dull side is on the top. You, you know that, you, you're happy about that, right? I never take anything for granted because you don't know. You know, some people might not ask me. There might be somebody sat in here now, oh, I'm glad he told me that because I didn't know. And he'll never own up to me, you see, but he knows now. So we catch this in on the side. Trap that in well, and you leave your silk hanging back out of the way here. And you can just wind the feather straight to the eye, and you can turn, keep turning that hackle as you're coming back towards your silk. When you get there, turn over with the silk, and you come to, through to the front. Now, what you've actually done with those last three turns you've eliminated the requirement to make a head because you trapped all the feather down as you were coming through. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So all you've got to do now is work finish on the front. Pull that bit out. <coughs> and if we trim the base with the hackle, I'm tempted not to, but if you're doing your own, then by all means do so. But that will work pretty much.